Hey everybody, welcome to Kindred Spirits. I'm your host, Christy Brower, and of course you know you're listening live to One Two Radio on Marvelous Mondays. As is always the case, I'm excited to be here with you, and I have a lot of fun stuff to share. I hope you've been listening this morning. We have had a, a fun morning already. We had a great time on One Two News with Elizabeth, and I know that Mo had a very interesting guest, so what a fun day. Nice kickoff to One Two Radio's Monday. I am in the chat room um, in two ways, so you can find me there in um, the chat. It, my banner is posted at the top of the page. It's the pinned post. That's where you can post questions, requests for readings, comments about our topic today. And you will also find me on video. I'm videoing on Facebook Live there in the chat room and, over, and also over on my fan page, which is Christy A. Brower. So you can find the video in either place if you would like to watch the show today. And I do always post these videos to my YouTube channel and also to my uh, website. So if you miss a show and you want to go back and watch one, you can. I've been videoing um, this whole year, so... I'm enjoying doing that. It's kind of fun to feel like I get to look you right in the eye when I talk to you. I know you're not actually looking in my eye, but it feels that way when I'm watching, you know, when I'm looking at the video. So that's really fun. So join me in whatever way that you would like to. Today I want to talk about my energy tip number one. So I'm going to pull that up, but it is... Um, <clears throat> that your energy body is like a light bulb on a dimmer switch. Choose the people and situations that turn up the switch. So I wanna talk about what that means and then I wanna talk about how you do that. <clears throat> I've had some comments from people that sometimes they find it difficult to choose people and situations that are good for them. And I, I know what you're talking about as, as an empath, and as a social worker, <clears throat> sorry guys, suddenly I have a frog in my throat that wasn't there before I went on the radio. Of course, that's typical, isn't it? Anyway, <clears throat> it can be difficult to choose people in situations that bring us up rather than bring us down. So let me explain what I'm talking about when I say the light, our energy body is like a light bulb on a dimmer switch. I'm talking about that level of your aura that is your bubble. It's your arm's length bubble from your from that level to yourself is your bubble. That's your energy. That's a place that should be your energy and your energy alone. That is the energy that we project out into the world. That is the energy that tells people who we are. It's sort of like a neon sign flashing saying, this is who I am. This is what I want out of life. This is what I'm attracting back to me. <clears throat> Most of the time, we don't really take control of that. Um, we just do um, whatever comes unconsciously when it comes to our energy bodies. And because of that, sometimes we project out into the world energy that we don't mean to project out into. Have you ever had an experience where somebody said something about you to describe you that shocked you, that you would never have expected? Like if someone told you that you were intimidating or that you were hard to get to know or that you were um, difficult to approach, that you seemed... Um, removed from other people. Would you be surprised if somebody told you that about yourself? Often that is because that is what you are projecting. and You probably don't even know that's what you're projecting. That's just the message that's being sent by your energy body. So I designed these energy tips and a lot of the meditations that I offer and the work that I do over at One to Listen to assist you with assessing what is it that you're projecting why do things come across the way that they do? And what can you do about that? If it is not what you want to come across as, how do you change it? So one of the ways that you change it is that you pay very close attention to the your situations that you put yourself in, um, your friends, your family, the environments that you spend time in. Do they boost you up or do they drag you down? Now that's really, really important information to figure out because that has a direct effect on what you're projecting out into the world. If you are around situations that draw your vibration down, that make you feel sad and angry and frustrated, that are difficult, that make everything around you feel heavy, think about what you're projecting out into the world. Sad, difficult, heavy. Those are not words that you want other people to describe you as, are they? This is not the impression that you want other people to 
get from you? Uh, are they? I, I, I know that they aren't. I mean, I, that's a silly question because I know that they're not. So that's something that I want to work on a little bit today. And we're going to talk specifically about relationships, situations, how they affect your vibration, what you can do about that. Um, we're going to do a meditation that can help. And we're also, I'm going to share a stone that is, a, that is helpful with that because there are so many things that we could do ourselves. And sorry for that. That's my old dog coughing behind me. She likes to spend her days on um, her bed behind my chair. So I apologize for that sound, but she gets to stay on her bed because that's her favorite place to be. So let's talk about situations for a minute. What are situations that bring you up and bring you down? Some of the situations that we are in or environments are outside of our control. One of the ones that I hear the most about is work. You don't get to choose who you work with necessarily. You choose the company that you work for, but you don't get to choose your coworkers in general. Um, and sometimes the environment can be challenging. It can be low vibrating or it can just be stressful or you can work with difficult people that draw you down. That is one way that situations can turn up or turn down your dimmer switch, right? So I don't know if you have dimmer switches in your house, but I like to use this analogy that, and I'm sure if you don't have a dimmer switch, you've probably used one before where you slide it up and down and it changes how bright the a light bulb is, right? So you can dim it if you want a quiet, a quiet, darker room, or you can turn it up if you need more light. Well, I like to see our energy bodies that way that we are like that light bulb on a dimmer switch, but it is our experiences. It is the energy that we expose ourselves to that brings that energy up or down. So sometimes we have to use discernment. We have to use our skills to help with exposing ourselves to relationships and situations that bring that up. So that's what I'm talking about today. So here are some tips that I have, and this works We'll, we'll talk about relationships and we'll talk about um, situations, but these all work in all of those things. Number one, trust your gut. If something doesn't feel good to you, don't get involved. <clears throat> when it comes to jobs, one of the things that I tell everybody that I work with who's looking for a job, if you feel good in a situation at work, when you go there for the first time, when you go there for the interview, if it makes you feel good, if it brings your vibration up, you feel happy when you leave, you feel excited, you feel energized and inspired, that is a good place for you to work. If you go to an interview and you walk out of there feeling down and frustrated and hard on yourself and heavy, that may not be the best choice for you as far as a job is concerned. It's really important. You know, we always look at things like salary, benefits, hours, responsibilities. Those are the kinds of things that most of us look at when we're looking at a job. And we don't always think to feel the, sp the place, feel the people who interview you. You know, whether you go there physically or you go there on the phone, how does it make you feel? The place, the people, really trust your gut. There is an element of your intuition that is in your solar plexus, and it is focused entirely on what is best for you, because that's what your solar plexus is all about, is who you are, your personal power, getting what you want out of life, you know, allowing yourself to be you, being confident about you. So that element of your intuition is focused entirely on what's best for you. When you get into other elements of your intuition, particularly your heart, your heart gets all mixed up between other people, and you. So when you really need to know what's best for yourself, listening to your gut, what do you feel in your gut? That's what's more important than what your heart says. So that's really, really important to trust your gut and pay attention. Now, if you are already in a job and there are some challenging situations going on there, the energy brings you down. We're going to talk in a few minutes about some tools and skills that you can use to help with that. Now, I will say that if you are in a job that is so heavy and low vibrating that it's making you sick, that it's making you call in and not want to be there, and, you know, this is a time when you really consider leaving. If you're in a job that's harming you to be there, you definitely need to consider that it is having a long-term long impact on you in your physical, emotional, spiritual, and energetic health. And if that's the case, it's time to move on. I've had that conversation with several people lately. 
but sometimes it's just a particular situation or it's the energy of the space that needs cleared or it's just one person that you can deal with but you have to maybe have some extra skills to manage those particular issues and we'll talk about that let's talk about some other things that help to bring your vibration up and not expose you to things that bring your vibration down um, say no when you want to say no if you really don't want to get involved in something say no at the beginning it's so much easier to stay out of something than it is to get out of something. I know you know what I mean. You've said yes to something, got involved in something, and then realized that you really wished you hadn't because it was too much for you. It was stressful or it was um, challenging personalities or it was, you know, lots of gossip and, um, you know, maybe... Have you ever been on a volunteer board, for example? I've been on several. Um, <clears throat> where two or three of you do all the work and then everyone else just has a lot of ideas. That kind of stuff. If you don't really want to do it, if you're not really passionate about something or you don't feel good about it from the very beginning, you should say no at the beginning rather than wanting to get, trying to get out of it later. It's hard to get out of those obligations once you've taken them on. <clears throat> Doesn't mean you can't. You totally can. But it's easier to say no. So if you really want to say no, say no. That is okay. What else? Let's see. Get active about choosing the people that you want in your life. Seek out people who feel good to you. A lot of us, and I have done this too. We've all done it at different times. We live on autopilot. Where if somebody comes into your life, you're like, well, okay, you know, that's fine, whatever. You know, you're not necessarily choosing things or choosing relationships or choosing the people that you want around you. <clears throat> it's entirely okay to do that. It's okay. I'm not saying that, you know, you need to be mean and judgmental. But if you come into contact with somebody that makes you feel bad, you don't have to spend more time with them. You have that right to make that choice. And sorry, guys, my voice is fading a little bit. <laughs> I think we will take our meditation break and then we'll come back to some more because that'll give my voice a minute to relax. So if you don't mind, Scott, we're going to queue up. Scott and I have to sort of synchronize our watches to make this work because I'm going to play the meditation out loud for those of you who are listening on the radio. So hang on one second. All right. So Scott, let's go ahead and press play. This is Clear Your Bubble. Clear Your Bubble. Close your eyes and take a few deep breaths. Allow your body to settle and your mind to go quiet. Bring your attention to your bubble, the energy that emanates out from your body to your arm's length. Take a moment to observe what is swirling around inside your bubble. Is there energy there belonging to other people? Is there energy here that is lowering your vibration, causing anxiety and emotional upset? Let's clear your bubble. First, in your mind's eye, screw a garden hose to the outside of your bubble. Now imagine a vortex of white light open up in the earth next to you. Drop the end of the garden hose into the vortex of white light. Now watch as all the energy in your bubble that does not belong to you drain out into the vortex of white light. This energy will be transmuted into love and released from you forever.
Once your bubble is empty, unscrew the garden hose from your bubble. Now, draw your attention to your heart chakra. What colors do you feel or see here? Push your heart chakra energy out, filling your bubble with your own energy, creating a sacred space of peace and protection for you, giving a clear boundary between you and everyone else. When your bubble is full of your own heart chakra energy, take three deep breaths. And open your eyes. Welcome back to Kindred Spirits. I'm Christy Brower, and I hope you enjoyed that meditation. That is called Clear Your Bubble. And the reason that I shared it today is that it is a great meditation to help with your keeping your vibration high. If you are, in fact, in a situation or around people that do bring you down, that affect your vibration, and, you know, you come home from work or a family gathering or something, and you feel like your vibration is down and you're kind of dragging, this is a great meditation to do to bring your vibration back up because it helps you to release the energy that you have attracted or absorbed or picked up, however you want to say that, in the situation that you were in. That meditation is um, available for free download at my website, christybrower.com. It is called Clear Your Bubble. And I developed it specifically for um, empaths because as an empath, most and most of us, most of you listening are empaths. That's why you're here. And so we have a tendency to suck up energy from other people. It's one of the reasons why we get a vibrational problem being in low vibrating situations is that we tend to absorb some of that energy that we're um, in the presence of. And so a meditation like Clear Your Bubble helps you to release that energy and let go of it. It is a meditation that I recommend that if you if you work in a situation that is low vibrating and you come home every day feeling heavy, do it after you get home from work. Do it every day. One of the great things about that is that if you do it right after you get home from work, then you aren't carrying that energy around with you everywhere. You can bring your vibration back up. Let's talk about a few other tips, things that can help you with uh, with keeping your vibration high and, and staying in positive situations. Get some energy tools to protect yourself when you have to be in contact with people who bring you down. So we talked about the Clear Your Bubble Meditation. Another one that I like to use that many of you use that we've talked about is to use the, the visual of a wall of bulletproof glass. Or maybe you need a bulletproof glass phone booth or cubicle. So this is creating intention. It really, what it does is it sets that outside edge of your aura to do a job for you. And so if you set the intention that you're in a phone booth of bulletproof glass, what that means is your energy body has now closed itself so that you don't have to pick up the energy that's around you. You feel like you're in a safe space. I wanted to say, this is funny because this is exactly how I think of it too. Pamela said, I know I am dating myself, but wish I had the cone of silence like what was on Get Smart. Well, use the bulletproof glass phone booth like a cone of silence. You can set up a space that is intentionally repelling energy. Now, this isn't permanent, and you would never want it to be permanent. But if you are in a situation that feels stressful, that you're picking up energy that you don't want, that you want some distance from, use the intention of a wall of bulletproof glass between you and someone else or a situation that's evolving around you. Or just in general, if you're in a low vibrating space, you can put yourself in that wall 
in that uh, phone booth of bulletproof glass so that all that's in there is just you and your own energy. Like in the clear your bubble um, meditation at the end, when we fill that bubble up with what? Our own heart chakra energy, right? Because that's what should be in that space is you. Just you, not everybody else. So those are a couple of tools that you can use. Use the wall of bulletproof glass. Use um, clear your bubble. And then the other one is the stone of the week. The stone of the week is selenite. So selenite is a salt. It's actually gypsum. Um, it is what I call the great transmuter. Selenite is a self-clearing stone that transmutes all energy into light. So whatever you come into contact with, it or it comes into contact with, will be transmuted into light. And so you can keep a piece of selenite on your desk at work. You can wear a piece. You can carry a piece with you in your pocket to help you to transmute low vibrating energy. Another skill that you can use, this is something that I use all the time in tons of different ways. That is the to, in your mind's eye, open up a vortex of bulletproof. No, sorry guys, my voice is really, I'm really struggling, so I apologize. A vortex of white light in the earth. And into that vortex, you can throw anything that does not serve you. Anything that you need to release can go right into that vortex of white light. So you can use this in, in situations where you're struggling with something or someone. You can gather up all the energy that you don't like, put it in a ball, and throw it into the vortex of white light. All of these are just, they're just energy skills. Um, I've taught a lot of energy skills here on the radio and over at One Two Academy, and I've made many of them available to you in multiple ways. And one of them is that I have bundled a bunch of my classes together that that were sort of a series so that you can learn, you know, a particular skill if you want to learn. So I wanted to share with you today my class bundle that's called Your Aura. And here's the description of it. Do you want a deeper understanding of yourself or someone else? Your aura carries a lot of information about you. It is like a neon sign announcing to the rest of the world who you are. This class series includes your aura. So just a, a class about understanding your aura. What are you projecting? Which is a class about what are you putting out into the world? How do you know what you're putting out into the world? How do you change that? If you want it to be different, how do you get a handle on it? And then how to read auras. And so this is a class about how to understand what you're picking up from other people. We already all read auras. We're all aura readers because we feel what's happening in other people's energy bodies when we have experiences with them and we use that information. Sometimes that's conscious. Most of the time it's unconscious. So my aura reading class is to teach you how to become conscious about that. What do you put out there? What do you, you know, what information are you getting back? What is, what does it mean when you feel a certain energy from somebody's energy body? I talk about different qualities of energy in that class. So colors and qualities of energy. Is the energy smooth? Is the energy electrical? Is the energy spiky? Is the energy pushing back at you? You know, those kinds of things. Learning how to intentionally interpret R is actually is very helpful in your life because it helps you to understand the people around you at a new level. And it will also help you to understand yourself and what you may be putting out there. So this class bundle is available at onetolisten.com. It's in my email readings, but I did put a link to it. It came out in my newsletter this morning. And I also put it here in the chat if you would like to pick that up. It's so there, each class is 55 minutes long. And is that right? Yeah, 50. 50 or 55 anyway and some of them come with handouts it doesn't they don't all come with handouts I think in this particular series the how to read Aura's class comes with a handout as well so you will get the links to download all three mp3 files of the classes and a pdf file of the how to read Aura's handout you can listen to the classes multiple times um, it's a great way to learn and better understand your energy body and understand your aura if this is something that you want to work on and know more about this is a great way to do that. So I wanted to share that with you um, because it's really a passion of mine to teach about this particular topic. I have spent my life truly um, understanding my aura and everyone else's. It's something that I do a lot of and I want to share that information with all of you because I know that we didn't learn this stuff growing up, did we? We didn't get this aura information. We didn't get this chakra information. 
We didn't learn about the energy body or the energy system in the body, which is in fact a system like your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your, uh, your nervous system. You have an energy system. And we didn't learn about this growing up or in school. We didn't even learn about it in college. If you took an, you know, if you took a nat and phys in college, they didn't talk about the energy system, did they? Really, really important information. We need to understand it better to understand ourselves and understand other people. So much of it is unconscious. We can't not interact with other people's energy bodies. That doesn't happen. We have to. It's how we learn. It's how we um, understand the world around us. But if we make it conscious, if we step it up and go from a place of just reacting to intention and an intentional understanding and then choosing our reaction, that changes things very, very much. It also may help us to understand that you may be in situations that actually are low vibrating and are affecting your vibration all the time and you hadn't realized it. So understanding your energy body and taking some time to learn about this can help you to understand if you are in a situation or in a relationship that really is dragging you down. I, I have met many people who were in a situation when they described it to me, I was horrified. But to them, they didn't understand how much damage it was doing. We sort of get used to things over time. So this information is very helpful in learning how to get up out of that and feel better, have a happier life. That's the goal, right? I want to get to a few more tips I have about keeping your vibration up. Expect people to treat you with respect. Expect it. That is an ex expectation that every human being has the right to. And if you are not treated with respect, you have every right to address that as well. It is not okay for people to be disrespectful to one another. If you treat others with respect, you have every right to expect the same. If someone isn't, you have every right to address that. You don't have to allow other people to hurt you. It's okay to speak up about those things. A lot of us as healers, as light workers, as light warriors even, we have a tendency to expect niceness out of ourselves. And the world has a tendency to expect niceness out of us, right? And because of that, sometimes we get sucked into situations where we're being way too nice in a situation that's actually harming us. Expect good treatment. Expect respect. And if you don't get it, seek it elsewhere. Address it. Face it. Don't just allow it. Let's see. I said this one already, but I want to say it again because this is important. When you're job hunting, pay attention to how you feel in the environment, how you feel in the presence of the interviewer or on the phone with the company. If you feel heavy, sad, anxious, angry, or in pain afterward, this may not be the right job for you. If you feel happy, light, excited, and peaceful, this employer is a good energy match for you. Pay attention to energy matches. That's true for employers. It's true when you're searching for a new place to live. You know, have you ever been apartment hunting or house hunting and walked into a house and went, ugh, this place feels terrible. Don't buy that house, okay? My house, the house I live in right now, my wife Rhonda and I, we walked in the front door, stood in the living room and looked at each other and said, this is the house. And our realtor was like, you haven't even seen the house. We're like, well, show it to us, but we're going to buy this one. And we did. The, the moment we walked into the space, I felt it. And so did she. It just hit us like a wall. This is the right place for us. It felt like home the second we walked in the door. And we bought it. And this is where we live. My son every once in a while asks when we're going to move. And we both say never. <laughs> we love this house. We're not going anywhere. Um, so pay attention to those feelings. They matter. We live in a very rational society that tells us that it's what we think that really matters. But when it comes to your happiness, when it comes to getting what you want out of your life, it's actually what you feel that matters. So pay attention in every situation. If there's something that makes you feel uncomfortable or off about something, trust it. You're going to find out later that you were right. I want you to think about that for a minute. Have you ever taken a job or said yes to something or gotten into a relationship, even though there were some red flags, even though your intuition was telling you this is a bad idea. 
and then later regretted it, looked back and went, man, I knew this wasn't good for me. Okay. Use that as a learning experience. Use that as a teaching moment for yourself. It's not a time to get shameful about it or to put yourself through a bunch of guilt. It is simply about learning and going, okay, I was right. I can trust my intuition. I can trust myself that when this comes up and I feel this way, there's a reason and I need to remember that the next time this happens, it's okay to say, no, nope, wrong one for me, okay? Work through feelings of guilt or shame that keep you in bad situations. Sometimes you need to talk with a trusted friend or advisor about this and make a plan to remove yourself from a situation. How often have you stayed in something that was hurting you, low vibrating, affecting your, your energy, hurting you physically, because you felt guilty or shameful, because for some reason it was your fault. For some reason you had to stay. Maybe you were there to punish yourself, you know, and maybe you didn't even realize you were at the time. But think about it for a minute. How often has guilt and shame kept you in a situation that was not good for you? If that is happening to you, please reach out to me, to somebody else that wants to listen, to someone that you trust. Let's talk about it and let's find a way out. No one deserves punishment like that. Nobody. I know that you don't. Doesn't matter what happened in the past or a choice that you made or a commitment that you made or whatever. So often we feel guilty, don't we? We get into a commitment. We feel guilty because we said yes. And so then we're stuck. It's not true. You still always have the right to choose. And if you're unhappy with something, it's okay to change it. Change can be hard and scary, and sometimes you need some support. And that's why I'm here. Um, um, Ade Anifawoshe, you all know Ade, he uh, called me a change agent one time on his show when I was a guest of his. And that's so true. That is a big part of what I do. I help people change. I help you make a change. I help you move from this place to the next, to the next, to the next. And one of them is to work through any guilt or shame that keeps you in a situation that's no longer good for you, okay? Your job is to develop your own happiness, passion, and goals. You don't owe anyone else anything. You really don't. We are all responsible for ourselves. We're responsible for our own happiness. You can't change somebody else's path. You can't change somebody else's happiness. You can only change your own. So if you are in a situation that isn't good for you, it's time to change it. Okay, let's do that. Release relationships that drain you. There should be give and take in every relationship. If you are giving and giving with nothing in return, this relationship is bringing you down. You know it is. You, you Think about it for a minute. If you are in a situation like this, you know that it's happening. Even when you don't choose to get out of it, you still know, don't you? So there are a lot of ways to change a relationship like that. Sometimes it's simply acknowledging that this is what's going on and that we need to do something different. Sometimes you don't have to leave a relationship. Sometimes you simply have to acknowledge it and say, listen, I feel like all I do is give. Can we work on this? We all have situations in our lives, periods of our lives where we need a lot from other people, don't we? Sometimes you get in a habit of needing so much that you forget that other people need something too. That happens to everybody sometimes. And so it can just be a matter of bringing it to the other person's attention. And they may not have realized that they've fallen into that space. If you do that and things don't change and you continue to have a relationship that is a drain on you, then it's time to consider looking at it from a different standpoint. Then it's time to really consider if this relationship is in your best interest. That can be hard. I know it can be. I've had to let a couple of friendships go over the years for that very reason. And it was hard. I, I didn't want to do it. I, it was painful to me. I don't like letting go of people. But occasionally you get to a situation that becomes very toxic. And if all you do is give and give and there's not a lot of reciprocity and you start to resent. You know that feeling, right? When you start to really resent someone because... You feel like all you do is give and they don't, even when you ask for support or, you know, friendship or whatever, and they're not there for you, but then when they're in need, then they expect you to be, you develop some resentment, don't you? 
I, I know that I have developed that before. And so I seriously have had to, sorry, I had to look at something on my chat. I know I moved my camera. I seriously have had to make some changes in, in my life over some time because of that. And I, I don't do it out of anger. I really don't. I do it out of, you know, obviously this is no longer a good fit for me. And if it's not a good fit for me, it's really not a good fit for the other person either. Remember that that's okay. We're all on our own path and we're all responsible for our own happiness. And so if you need to let something go, it's okay to let it go. The other person will be okay. They are responsible for themselves. If they've gotten to a point where they're too dependent on you, they're not really being responsible for themselves and their happiness, are they? So it's one of those times when it's okay to say, okay, this is not helping me. It's not helping you. It's time to let it go. Something to think about, you know, if you're, if you're in a situation that's very draining. So those are my tips. I'm, I'm going to check the chat room. I'm just refreshing Facebook so I can. I hope that this resonates with you. Um, I hope that it's helpful if you've had questions about this particular topic. Obviously, we go deeper in the classes. And so if you want to take, um, <clears throat> take those classes, you know, you can order those through the email-based service over at Want to Listen, and I will send them, send the links to you. I always um, am open to questions. If you take a class from me, whether it's live or recorded, please feel free to message me if afterward you have a question, um, you know, you want some clarification, I'm happy to do that. But this is a this is a powerful topic and one that I'd like to work on with everybody. Okay, so I'm just going to check the chat room really quickly here. And then I will get to your questions. Let's see. Oh, Liliana loves selenite. I do too. I have a lot of selenite. Let's see. Oriana says, it's a huge difference when you leave a toxic situation, isn't it? But you feel this tremendous sense of relief. I think sometimes when we leave a toxic situation, that's when we realize how truly toxic it was. When you feel this tremendous level of relief that you didn't expect, or maybe you expected some relief, but you realize that, man, this was dragging me down in so many different ways. It's really good to remember that so that we don't do it again, right? It's all about just learning and, and recognizing and feeling those red flags and, you know, feeling that gut intuition that tells us when something's good for us or it isn't. You, so it's, it's a process of development and learning and understanding. Oriana says, I took a job and I knew it was a bad fit for me and I was a bad fit for them from the get-go. Yeah, okay. Well, you know what? You learned, didn't you? You learned from that. You won't do it again. You know, the next time... If you feel like it's a bad fit from day one, don't take the job. And I know that's a hard thing to say, especially if you are struggling with um, your income and you're needing a job. Sometimes you feel like I'm desperate. I have to take whatever. But in the long run, that's probably a job you're not going to stay at anyway. And so it's really not worth wasting your time and energy on a job like that because ultimately you'll end up moving on to something else. And so waiting for the right energy, waiting for the right fit is very worth it in the long run. Okay, we've got lots of questions here in the chat, so I'm going to get to some of you guys. Maureen says, may I please have an energy clearing? Left knee swelling popped up out of the blue. Maybe I overdid it this weekend. And happy full moon. Oh, happy full moon. Two nights ago, I did not get any sleep at all. Dang, full moon does that to me every once in a while. Not every time but occasionally. So it wasn't so happy of a full moon for me, honestly. <laughs> okay, Maureen, when I take a look, I feel like, number one, yes, you did overdo it over the weekend. I feel like the left knee issue is entirely physical. It is not an energy problem, but your vibration is pretty low. You, you feel very drained to me. There's a solar plexus attachment that I would like to clear. It's just, it's a thought form attachment. Um, sometimes people attack us when we stand up for ourselves or say how we really feel. They don't mean to. It's not intentional. This is one of those unconscious actions of the energy body that when you learn to understand the energy body, you can stop those kinds of things. You can stop yourself from doing them. You can also clear them immediately when they happen from somebody else. But somebody's hit you right in the solar plexus. So I'm going to just pull that. That's really keeping your vibration down. 
And uh, I, I think that that's, you know, got you kind of drug out. So we're going to pull that. And then, of course, take good care of your knee. You know, do what you need to do physically to take care of it. If you need to have it looked at, do that. But it is not an energy problem in your knee. Okay. Pulled that cord. So you should feel a whole lot better, Maureen. Thanks for the question. Okay, let's see. Jennifer says, hi, Christy. Until recently, I was not able to fully feel it to understand what you were talking about. I think you're talking about your energy body. and You're starting to feel it, which is awesome. I'm really glad for that. The thing is, we all feel our energy bodies. We just don't realize that's what we're feeling because it feels like a physical sensation. And so we think it's our body when it's really our energy body. Also, you get very used to something. You know, like, have you ever had someone come in your house and say, man, your refrigerator makes a really loud noise? And you didn't realize it did because you've become so used to it that you just don't hear it anymore. Same thing with our energy bodies. They're a part of our physical body, you know? I mean, you don't really feel your blood flowing through your veins, right? You feel breathing because of the air coming in and out, but you don't feel your nervous system firing, do you? It just doesn't, unless you're in pain. But in general, things just happen automatically, and that's how the energy body can be as well. Learning to change it, learning to manipulate it and get it to do what you want it to do is um, actually a really good way to feel it because when you make a change to it, it feels different than you notice it. So then you feel it. So I'm glad to hear that, Jennifer. Ivy says, may I please get a body scan? Sure. Let's take a look at what's going on with you, Ivy. Oh, Ivy, it's all throat chakra. Got lots of, okay. Lots of words going unsaid here. Feel like you really need a way to express some things. And you're, you may be in a situation where you can't express directly. And I understand that. That can, you know, that we all have situations like that. Family situations, work situations, where it wouldn't be in your best interest to actually speak up. But I feel like you need a way to express what's going on around you in some way. So speaking to someone that you trust writing it in a journal, writing a letter that you burn, something. Get those words out, Ivy. They need to be expressed in some way. Say how you feel in one way or another, okay? Thank you for that question. Let's see. Liliana says, I would love a clearing. Yesterday I was around really toxic people. Can you tell me what other things I can do around them? Okay, good. So first of all, Liliana, it's good that you know that they're toxic. Sometimes it takes us a while to recognize that in people that we care about or that we know well. Oh, let's see. Let's just do a little clearing. You know, your aura looks a little like um, a, a grimy window. So you've picked up some stuff. You've managed to not really take it in though, which is good. It's just sort of on the outside of your aura. So I'm going to clear that up for you. Use my energetic wind Windex, right? And clear up those windows. Okay, so I feel like using the wall of bulletproof glass would be really good for you around these folks. The other thing that you can do is you can wear a piece of jewelry that is protective, bless it, that it will create a bubble of protective energy around you so that you don't need to constantly be protecting, but it can be doing some of the work for you. If you can see my necklace today, this is a piece of scepter quartz from... Crystal Park, Montana. I do a lot of work with stones from Crystal Park. This is one of my protective stones. And so if I'm going into a situation that I know is going to be kind of, you know, negative or toxic, I will bless this stone to place a bubble of protective energy around me to give me a barrier between other people. I have several pieces of jewelry that I wear for that. Um, all, really what it needs is it needs your intention in it, what you want it to do for you. So I would suggest trying those two things, Liliana, and see how they work for you, okay? That's a great question. Okay, Janelle says, good morning. I'm loving this topic. I spent way too many months in a very draining situation and finally stepped away from it in June. I am trying to move forward, but I still feel that I have a low vibration because of the situation and from finding out that I was lied to and cheated on. I want to let it all go and not bring those doubts and insecurities into my future, but I haven't figured out how. Any help, guidance, or suggestions from you would be greatly appreciated. I want to get out of my own head and overthinking things. Okay, so Janelle, you have several things going on. First of all, you have a very overactive crown chakra and you have an underactive root. You have what I call tornado energy body. So your lower chakras are underactive, your upper chakras are overactive. 
It's keeping that situation running in your brain, okay? So it's like a record on repeat. It just keeps going round and round and round. The other issue for you is that there was some trauma related to this for you. There, You have a, a, what I call a trauma attachment. That's um, an energetic cord that runs from you, an energy cord that runs from you to the situation. And it's, you're still attached to it. And because of that, you are feeling it all the time, like it's still happening, even though you've walked away from it. So two things we need to do, and we're just, I'm going to do them as we're talking. I'm going to shift your root into place and I'm going to balance your chakras. Okay. And you're going to, if you're watching the video, you get to see me bouncing around because I do a lot of moving. I have awakened Kundalini, which means that my energy body has a very strong impact on my physical body when I do this work. So Janelle, I'm just balancing your chakras and I'm going to clear your crown, opening that crown up wide, releasing all that stagnant energy, all that worry and overthinking and, and the, you know, the situation on repeat in your head. We're going to clear that. And then I'm going to do a trauma attachment clearing. And, and I want you to think of this like you have a balloon tied around your wrist. And in the balloon is the energy of this situation. So it's sort of always there with you. You know, have you ever had a balloon tied around your wrist? It's sort of always in your line of sight, even, you know, kind of like even out of the corner of your eye, you can see it. So this traumatic experience is sort of always there in the corner of your eye. You can always feel it with you. So we're going to untie the balloon and we're going to let it go so that you're not carrying it with you everywhere you go all the time. So I'm just going to clear that energy that releases your attachment to this experience. The goal is to make it a part of your past. It's in your memory. Of course, it happened. It's part of making you who you are right now, but it doesn't have to be part of your present experience. Now, I do a lot more work with trauma, Janelle, and if you would like to work on this further, please give me a call at once you listen. I would be happy to um, assist you further with this. I, you know, one little session on the radio is probably not enough in this particular situation, but it's a good start. But I would love to work with you on it further. Um, trauma work is, is something I'm very passionate about. So thank you for your question, and I hope that helps. Let's see. Mercy says, Christy, that's how I feel about my house and location. The last two years was some kind of a lesson. Okay, so just think about what the lesson was, Mercy. Were you getting promptings from your intuition? Were you feeling like maybe this wasn't the right job? Uh, or not job, but but house for me, but I just took it because I needed something, you know, wide. What got you into that situation? And simply use that information as a way to learn from it so that you can um, move forward, okay? But again, no shame, no guilt. Don't blame yourself. Ivy says, selenite is my go-to to help me cleanse when I deal with toxic people. Yes, I love selenite. This big piece right here I use for myself and other people, whether I'm with you in person or by distance, when I really need to clear some heavy energy, I hold this stone while I do the work because it helps me to transmute energy. Let's see. Kevin says, same. I took my current job out of desperation. I've learned a lot while there. A move is in the works. That's awesome, Kevin. And I'm happy for you that you recognize that, that you've learned from it, and that you can move forward from it. There's no need to get stuck in a situation and, and never let yourself get out of it. You know, it's okay to go, okay, I took this job because I was desperate. I need to get out of it. I understand why I got here. Now I'm going to move forward, okay? Let's see. Christine would like a scan. Let's take a look really quick. There we go. Okay, Christine, just a little bit of a shaky root chakra. Nothing really major, but I just stabilized that for you and balanced your chakras, but you're really looking quite good. Melissa says, in the past hour, my hands have really heated up. Is this an activation related to the lunar eclipse? Ooh. Good question. Yes, there is a lunar eclipse today, isn't there? Um, you know, Melissa, I do feel like those experiences are activations. I do feel like they're your energy body responding to something. So it would be important for you to explore that. Spend some time alone. Hold your hands together. I want you to make a chi ball. So put your hands together like you're making a snowball. Like you're patting a snowball together. And I, Melissa, I bet you're going to start to feel a ball of energy build up 
Very good. I feel it already building up in your hands, okay? That's the energy that's coming in for you. You know, you can pull it apart. You can put it back together again. I feel it. I really feel it in you. Um, I'm feeling like I'm going to place it in my heart. Maybe you should place it in your heart and spend some time with what does this mean to you? But I think that there's an activation going on in your energy body, certainly making you more aware of your energy. Good question. Lori says, what would you suggest as a protective stone for me? Lori, the, my first thought was black tourmaline is really coming to mind for you. So get yourself a piece of black tourmaline. It's one of those pieces that's really easy to get. It's not expensive. Just carry it with you. The thing with stones is that you always want to bless them with what you want them to do for you. Give them a job. Give them some direction about where you want them to go or what, what you want them to do for you. Okay? That's the key. So get a piece of black tourmaline. Um, Liliana wants to know if I sell this crystal or jewelry. I do have um, an Etsy shop. I will be having some wrapped protective ambulance amulets on there soon. That is coming. I'm going to, it's called Mystic Mountain Stones. That's my, um, that's my Etsy shop. And it's all stuff that I make. There are some things on here that are protective. Now there's a mala particularly that is. So Liliana, I'm going to post that to you. But you guys watch for that. And I'll be sharing that when I have those available. But there are going to be, um, I'm going to do some wrapped like these scepter quartzes and a few things like that. So. Thank you for that question. Let's see. Uh, Melissa says she felt that ball of energy. Good. Very good. I'm really, really glad. Vonda says it's great to listen and that she uh, will get some selenite. Ooh, please do. You will, you will not regret it. I love selenite very much. It's a wonderful stone. Okay, guys. Well, we just have a couple of minutes left. I want to remind you that... Um, you will find me here this week again on the Psychic Sisters on Thursday. And I want to make sure that you know about my class bundles. I think this is really important. This is something that I'm offering now. I'm going to post several of them in the chat here at the end of the show. But I have taken, you know, I've been teaching over at One Two Academy for almost five years. And so I have a lot of recordings of classes and I have put them together in bundles. So if you want to learn about a particular topic and go deeper with it, you know, through a multiple, you know, a series of classes. This is exactly the way to do that. And I love that they're recorded because you can listen to them over and over again. You know, if you're working on something that you really want to really get in your head, you can listen more than once. So I have my, my Aura class bundle. Um, I also have a Chakra class bundle that is um, all of the chakras. So this, there are actually, I think there are, eight no there are nine there are nine classes in this series so it goes through all of your chakras plus um, the class on your aura is in there as well um, and it includes your high heart chakra so that's why there's a little bit of extra but there's um you know some really great opportunities with these classes to pick up some things that maybe you haven't um learned in the past and that you want to so I'm looking forward to sharing all of that with you. So at the end of the show, I'm going to post a few things in the in the chat, but you can find them also over at one listencom in my advisor profile page in my email readings, okay? All right, guys. Well, I am out of time, and I just want to say thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate our time together. And I will be available for the rest of the day over at One Two Listen. So if we talked about something that struck a nerve with you, something you want to work on a little further, let's do that together. So thanks for being here. And as always, thanks for listening to One Two Radio, where we're changing the way you listen to the world.